from your friends at PTV, it's Ali Chat with your host, Ali Van Kooten. Now, let's chat. Hello, and welcome to the Ali Chat. I'm your host, Ali Van Kooten, and today I'm here with the Kansas Education Commissioner, Dr. Randy Watson. Hey, Ali, how are you? Hi, how Thanks are you? Thanks for today? having me today. Thank you. Wow, it's really great to be here in Phillipsburg and to be with you. Perfect. So tell me about why you're in Phillipsburg today. Well, uh, it was great weather, and we heard that there was this uh, great uh, alley chat, that, and we <laughs> wanted to be here. No, we, uh, we actually, um, I'm out visiting 26 school districts uh, in six days, and so most of them will be on Highway 36. We actually started in Osborne on Highway 24, made our way to Colby, but then... We started in St. Francis, and uh, I will end on late Monday in Riverside School District, which sets on the Kansas River right across from Missouri. Oh, wow. All on Highway 36. Wow. Or, or close to Highway 36, like Logan, mm -hmm. Northern Valley. But, yeah. Okay. And this is one of my favorite places. Oh. No, I was telling you, I was <laughs> telling your superintendent, I'm not making this up, because I always get a chance to come watch these great things that are going on you know, here uh, in, in Phillipsburg and what you guys are doing, including this program. So yeah. I'm excited. Okay. So you're in Phillipsburg today, but where did you attend high school? Coffeeville. Do you know where that is? This Kansas geography lesson. Oh, I don't think I know. Well, <laughs> you know, it's it's a long way. Okay. I wouldn't have known where Phillipsburg was when I was in okay. school either. Okay, let's just throw that up there. Uh, so Coffeeville is in southeast Kansas. So it's right on the Oklahoma border. Uh, in southeast Kansas, and um, uh, I actually went to a school named Field Kinley High School, which is really unusual because it's the only high school in Coffeyville. So you would think it would be named Coffeyville High School, right? But it wasn't, and it's a really interesting story that if you have you know thirty minutes, we could go into that. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I, I'm a southeast Kansas boy. Okay. So what changes have you seen in education since you've been in high school? Oh, my gosh. You know, that's like horse and buggy days, right? It's so <laughs> old. Um, first of all, um, I think the level of academic that we, that we ask uh, is certainly higher than it was when I uh, graduated. There's no doubt about that. I think uh, we're also asking you to be involved in other things that make you well-rounded, so like this program or being on a football team or being in a drama play. We really want kids to have that full experience. Um, I also think that with increased academics that have happened over those years, uh, we, ha we have an increase in uh, a set of skills that people define in different ways. Soft skills, employability skills, social emotional skills. Um, there's a greater demand for that in the workforce, and there's a greater need, I think, in high school students okay. to attend to those. Yeah. So, w overall, would you say those changes have been negative or positive? No. You know, I think I think they've been positive. Um, I think there's more challenges. Mm -hmm. um, there's certainly less intact families than there were. Uh, my parents were divorced. Uh, and I was, that was unusual mm -hmm. when I was growing up. Uh, most of uh, most, uh, my friends came from two uh, parent households, and I didn't. Uh, but that's more common. People travel more. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so we didn't leave Coffeeville very much other than to play sports or maybe do a Christmas shopping trip once a year. But, so, uh, but I think overall the changes have been good. You know, Allie, what, what I find at the core are kids are still kids. I think they, they want to be challenged. They want to know that teachers are there with them, right, in the challenge. Mm -hmm. um, they want to have um, a path forward as an adult. They may not know how to get there. Uh, they may not even have uh, a home life uh, that shows them how to. So I think we, we have to do that a little bit more, but I think it's still, I think students still want that, and I think we're still seeing that. Okay. So... What issues do you think we need to address the most regarding education today? Well, uh, we have an educator shortage. So we're going to start with that. We, uh, it's, we have fewer people becoming superintendents, principals, bus drivers, teachers, paraprofessionals. And if we don't solve that, I mean, and it's multiple problem, multiple solution, then school as we know it's not going to function very well, right? So. Your great education here in Phillipsburg is totally dependent on outstanding teachers. And without that, right, mm -hmm. and so we have to be able to deliver that, not only here, 
but in Logan, in Northern Valley, in Wichita. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and we don't have enough uh, educators right now. So we have a shortage of teachers. We have a shortage of bus drivers. We have a shortage of uh, superintendents and principals. And so we're, we're wanting people like yourself and uh, uh, other classmates of yours to consider our profession and do that. And then after that, uh, I think there are lots of other things we can talk about, but I think it's the educator shortage we're really going to have to address. Okay, so Phillipsburg was lucky enough to fill the job openings, but that's not the case for a lot of schools, like you said. So what is Kansas doing to um, improve the teacher shortage, and how do we like stack up against other states concerning this shortage? Okay, so it, it is a nationwide shortage. Uh, and it's, again, the, the root cause of that is multiple. And so the solutions are going to be multiple. But I think some of the things that we're looking at is we would like every high school to have a teacher prep pathway for students that may want to teach. And we then encourage those students to maybe work with some of the businesses in town that would finance them if they came back. So if, if I graduated from here and said, you know what, I'll come back and give you at least five years if you help pay off some of my college. That was a really good incentive. So kind of we call that grow your own. I think for a lot of students that are first generational, like no one in my family went to college, I think we're gonna to have to provide some alternatives that are closer nearby and, and lower cost in order to help them. Uh, and then um, I think we've got some professionals in, in the community that might think, you know what, I've done whatever I've done I've made some money, but I'd like to do something else. Uh, we, we need a way to easily transition them to come in and, and maybe teach, maybe one hour, maybe half a day, maybe full day. Mm -hmm. Okay, so overall, how would you say the schools that you have toured are doing? Well, outstanding. Kansas has really great education, and it's not because of me. Uh, and really, it's not the state board, even though they have a lot to do with that with policy. It's because we have great educators, great teachers, uh, and we have people that really care about their community, and they want what's best for the students there. So uh, we have, while well, we can always get better, right? We want to do that. Uh, I wouldn't trade Kansas education for any other state. Okay, so I'm a senior going to college here in less than a year, and I still don't know what I want to do. Oh, thank you. Let's, <laughs> let's work on this. We'll do a little so, IPS here on the fly. Huh? So what would you like to tell people my age that are um, to encourage them to go into teaching jobs? Well, uh, if you really want to work and help people, that's got to be foremost. And maybe you like a content. Like, so if you like a science or social studies or art or music, well, then I could be a teacher at the high school or middle school level. If I just really like students, or I just really want to help people, that's early childhood and, and elementary. Of course, that meshes in middle school and high school, too. So... Um, if that's you, Allie, if, if you would really you know, think about that, then I would want you to at least think about being in our profession, and I'd, I'd certainly help you do that. But if you do, are, do you not know about I, next year? I'm just, I'm kind of on the fence about a couple different options. Okay, so, um, so, so can, can I interview you here? Oh, okay. So, so, so Allie, what are you thinking about for next year? Um, I think that this is what I want to do, kind of like video news and broadcasting and okay. journalism of some sort. And why? What do you like about it? Um, I think I like um, I'm I like writing, and I also like being in front of a camera. <laughs> I think I'm Ooh, well, I think like I'm that. a bit natural in front of a camera. Okay. Not to brag. Okay, you should. You should. You're going to want to brag your whole career. Yeah. That's how you get yeah. the position. And so, are you thinking then about going to school to study that? Mm -hmm. Have you decided to go to school to study that? Um, I haven't decided where, but I know I want to go to like college to do. To you are going to go that. to four-year college mm -hmm. and maybe study journalism or mm -hmm. literature or something yeah, in that fine like and, and art. Would you consider teaching it? Um, I would consider it maybe later in life. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, there are opportunities. There, there are limited opportunities. There used to be a lot more in the journalism field. It's a shrinking field. But the podcasting and the TikTok mm -hmm. and all that isn't expanding, right? right? I can be an influencer. Yeah. Right? Uh, so what's interesting is the formal fields of that, working for the Wichita Eagle mm -hmm. uh, or being on TV, mm -hmm. there's that, those are limited jobs. Radio is really shrunk too. Yeah. But the podcasting, as I mentioned, and the influencer, the TikToks, and I can have my own channel. 
those type of things are really big. Yeah. So you can do kind of a combination of both, mm -hmm. if you don't mind being a little entrepreneur. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> yep. Okay. All right. Okay. So. So you got more than you bargained for on that question. A yeah. little bit, yeah. yeah okay. <laughs> so, Dr. Watson, is there anything else you would like to share? Well, just thank you for having me in Phillipsburg today and for being on your show. Yes, thank you. Uh, today and for everyone in Phillipsburg. And for and thanks for ordering up this really great weather yeah. I've been traveling on Northwest Yes. Kansas. Anything anything you would want me to know and my job as commissioner from your standpoint that we could do to make schools better? Mm, <laughs> really put me on the spot here. I know. Um, Nothing comes to mind, which I think is a good thing. Yeah, that is yes. a good thing. It means you're overall pretty happy with yes. your education. Yes. As you get older and you look back, you can always feel free to give good, positive input on how we can make school better yeah. for you and for other students like you. So okay. thanks. Yes. So that's all for the Alley Chat today. Um, thank you, Dr. Watson, for spending time with us. Um, see you next time. <laughs>